Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. Bracketing on a Nikon D750. First of all, you need to be in either program, shutter, aperture, or manual mode. If you go to the automated mode here, it simply will work. So make sure you're in one of these semi-automatic mode. Second thing is you need to adjust or set up the bracketing pressing this button here that sits on the front left of the camera with the letters BKT, Bravo, Kilo, Tango that is, BKT. When you press that button, you will notice that the, the screen changes. You can see here, the bottom part here is where you set up the uh, auto exposure. I release again and you have your normal information display. I press the button and so on and so forth. So that's, so you need to press the button while you're working with the values. Also while I'm working here, I'm using the front dial, that's this big one here. And then the rear dial, that is this one here. You see that is illustrated here, that you have the front dial is here and the rear dial is here. So when I'm changing the, the number of increments, I'm using the front dial, a number of shots, I'm using the rear dial. If you want to switch it on, you need to make sure that the number of shots is different from zero. If it's zero, that is the same as saying, I'm not going to use bracketing. So three, five, seven, nine, you can set it to whatever value you like, uh, and that will guide or control how many pictures the camera will take. The increments, will control how many steps up and down exposure value that the camera will take uh, as part of uh, taking these, in this case, three pictures. You can also see up here on the, on the scale here, it has marked that it will take one zero, meaning normally exposed. It will take one overexposed by one stop and one underexposed by one stop. So that will be the three pictures. If I change that to say five, you can see all of a sudden you have five dots here indicating how many stops it will be. You can go, I believe, up to nine. You can see nine, it cannot really illustrate. So it just gives you some arrows uh, to illustrate that there's more than what it can display. So that's really all there is to it. Once you have set it up, you may think that now it's just a question of pushing the shutter, but there's a little bit more to it. You can see here, I am in continuous uh, quiet mode that is, but you can take any of the continuous modes. The thing is, if you're in single shoot mode, then you will need to press the shutter as many times as you have asked for bracketing. And that of course is a little bit cumbersome. So I would suggest you would go to say continuous high. And then if you all have here have ordered, uh, what was it I have was five, five shots, then you will get actually seven then it will fire seven times. Okay, so with my little happy assistant here, the mad cow, I will take a number of uh, shots and show you how to merge these together to one picture in the uh, Lightroom. So here you can see now I have switched on live view. It tells me in the top right here that I have air auto exposure switched on and I've asked for seven pictures. If I press this shutter now, You could hear it fired an awful lot of times. I'm not sure if I counted seven, but, <laughs> but it did fire a lot of pictures. So let's have a look. And as you can see here, if I go work my way backwards, you can see here, this is the last picture it took. It's overexposed by three stops. The former one was overexposed by two stops, then one stop, then minus one, minus two, minus three, and then the normally exposed. And I don't know if you noticed how you can actually also follow how the histogram here, uh, it actually changes according to uh, the exposure values. So that's all there is to it. So now we just have to bring these seven pictures together in Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. You see top left, I have the normally exposed picture, then follows the three underexposed and the three overexposed. And if you follow the histogram here to the top right, you can see that clearly even the normally exposed one was a bit underexposed, but clearly these here, they are very lefty, whereas these are, if not more to the right, then, then somewhat more to the right at least. So what you do is you simply mark all of them, Control A, and then Control, uh, the, on the PC that is, Control H, 
as in hotel and that will generate your HDR picture. I know this is not the greatest art of photo, but uh, it does illustrate the process here. You can see it managed to get all seven images successfully merged. If, if it fails at including them all, it cannot really map them together, then it will tell you so. I usually leave auto align and auto settings on, and I do go for the high because that cleans up the pictures the best. And then I say merge. You can see up here to the left, it's creating an HDR. It takes a little while. Uh, I have a pretty powerful PC, so I would imagine this always taking a little bit of time. It throws the picture right into the middle somewhere of uh, the series of picture here, but you can recognize it that it is called something with HDR. There it is. And I really do admit there are many things I could have wished better for this uh, picture. I apparently have focused here on the bottom part and not the cow. And it also seems to be pretty dark still, even though it's the HDR together. But I hope this has illustrated the point uh, about how to do HDR on your smartphone. All of this happens uh, automatically. Here you have to do a little bit more handheld process. But I do find that HDR or bracketing makes sense uh, in those cases where you have pictures that have something that is both very very bright and very very dark also maybe primarily if you're shooting in jpegs but i think also you can stress you can stress raw pictures uh, subject to your dynamic range of your camera you can stress raw pictures also so that it makes sense to still do bracketing even if you're shooting raw yep that's really all there is to it you can bracket many uh, other things you can bracket for white balance and so on and so forth. I will not cover that in this video. My intention was to keep it short and sweet. This was a short how-to guide. I hope you found it useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you like the content here or even subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.